I don't, it seems like every time we get a report from the state troopers about an accident, and it's a fatal accident, just nine times out of ten, it seems like ten times out of ten, it'll say the victim was not wearing a seat belt. Uh, it, you would think almost everyone's wearing them by now, but they're not, are they? They're not. Uh, and, and as you mentioned, you, we hear all the time about how people are, do not have their seat belt on. A lot of times people end up getting ejected from vehicles um, or bounced around in vehicles because of that and end up uh, severely injured. One of the questions uh, that comes up a lot that I get asked about seat belts is whether if, if I'm not wearing my seat belt is that a complete bar to a claim I have? Mm -hmm. If I'm injured and it wasn't my fault, it's someone else's fault. Yeah. And it's, it's good to understand that not wearing a seatbelt is not in and of itself contributory negligence. The fact that you don't have it on actually has to be the cause of your injury. In other words, uh, I wasn't wearing a seatbelt and that's why I got injured. Okay. Uh, so it's not a complete bar in and of itself uh, to a claim that you have. Uh, you see some things there on your screen that are important when you're involved in a car wreck also about preserving evidence. Uh, one thing I always encourage my clients to do are to photograph their injuries so that you can have a time stamp of what your injuries look like at a period in time. Uh, also, recording your medical problems. Uh, number one, that's going to a doctor, going mm -hmm. to a hospital to have that officially documented. But also, if there's things that uh, you're at the house and are having issues, put that in a diary or a journal. And, and lastly, uh, the financial impact from injuries goes well beyond your medical expenses. So make sure you document uh, your lost wages, the time you're off from work, out-of-pocket expenses, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. missed vacations, uh, if you have to cancel a trip for work, things like that. Make sure to document as much as you can, and that'll help you out. I'll bet your favorite client are the clients that come to you needing your assistant, and they have paperwork with them and pictures, and that may be rare for them to be so well prepared, but that's a perfect client, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so, some clients will keep a binder and keep all that information, or if you just keep it in a, a little folder, whatever, if you, if you can keep that, that will definitely help your attorney. Out. And even if they keep something that's not really that helpful to the case, it probably didn't cost much to have it anyway. Exactly. Better safe than sorry. Usually it's just keeping, keeping the records you have instead of throwing them away. I know every case is different, but if you're in an accident, you're not wearing a seatbelt, and you are injured by getting into the steering wheel or maybe into the windshield, that would seem like that could be a problem for you if you didn't have your belt on and that's how you got hurt? It, it could be. That's, that's where you want to hire an attorney. Okay. Because most likely you're going to get a letter from the insurance company right off the bat saying, hey, the rec report said you did not have a seatbelt on. As you know, in the state of Alabama, Alabama has the law of contributory negligence. Therefore, mm -hmm. uh, you are, uh, are precluded from recovering. Well, th that may or may not be the case. We see it a lot where contributory negligence is, is thrown around to, uh, to claimants and, and uh, a lot of times uh, you can, uh, there's a way to, to work around that okay. and, and it's not a complete bar. But if you don't know the law, then you're going to be stuck there and you may, you may uh, forego making a claim because okay. of a letter you receive. That's where a good attorney comes in.